and welcome to Speaking of Caregiving. I'm Ben Ehrman, your host of Senior Resource Association's talk show. Each week, we'll discuss topics that will help you and your family to meet the demands of daily caregiving. Thank you, as always, to New Vision Eye Center of Vera Beach for sponsoring our show and for all that they do for us at Senior Resource Association. So if you are in need of some great eye care, check out New Vision Eye Center of Vero Beach, located directly across from the Indian River Medical Center. Today, I am joined by a returning guest who I'm really excited to have with me in the studio. Um, and I, first of all, I can't believe that we're in August already. The year is just flying by soon. It'll be Christmas time and then it'll be 2019. So today, um, I am joined with a guest who was with us a year ago, about this time, I think, Lauren Koff, the co-founder and vice president of Mind and Melody. And today we're going to discuss their music sessions and their programs and how it has just expanded and taken off. Such a wonderful thing that you guys have. So thank you for joining us again. (laughs) Thanks for having me today. So give everybody a little bit of background. As I said, you were with us here about a year ago and you have a wonderful uh, business that you and a partner of yours had started called Mind and Melody. And it is for um, music programs for individuals with or without neurological impairments. So it's a music therapy program. Is that so the correct way of putting it? So we use the word it? music enrichment when mm-hmm. we're describing what we do because not all of the musicians that we hire are actually board certified music therapists. Mm. So a music therapist goes in and they have specific goals, therapeutic goals that they're working on for that day. We go in um, with community musicians and are basically just providing a fun socialization, um, community driven event. Right. That's a lot of fun and really all centered yeah. around music. And music is fun. Everybody loves music. It's a universal language. Um, so tell us a little bit about the company and how it started and kind of what you guys are doing today. Absolutely. So we started back in 2014. Uh, my partner had this great idea. Her name is Christina. She thought, what if we could teach dementia patients how to play instruments? I thought, wow, what a <laughs> neat idea is mm-hmm. that? How can we explore that further? So we started looking into music therapy and found, wow, this is an incredible, you know, different way to reach people. There are a ton of benefits to it. How could we do this and involve the community in it as well? Because we really wanted to find a way to give people a way to give back, but have fun doing it at the same time. So that's how Minded Melody was born. We started at the Memory and Wellness Center of FAU in Boca. We would just do very small groups there where we'd get them engaged, learn a bit about their life. They would learn some about music, hear some performances. And then the best part of all is getting them to engage and try Mm -hmm. to play instruments themselves. So that can be so much fun. During our pilot, we did color-coded keyboards, and they learned fun songs like Mary Had a Little Lamb or Row, Row Your Boat. Now we do a lot of bringing in like cigar box guitars. They're these really little guitars that kind of have more of like a ukulele sound. Mm -hmm. They're very easy to hold. Those are always a huge hit with participants. Another fun thing we've been doing lately, especially up here in Vero, is um, very unique random instruments you've never seen or heard of. (laughs) So one is this didgeridoo. Yeah, I've heard of that. Have you heard of that? (laughs) Okay, cool. Nobody else has. I'm a music person, so I've heard of that. That's from Australia, correct? Yes, Yes. correct. It's this (laughs) giant horn, and it's really fun, and it's a great um, way to show how different instruments are and how Mm -hmm. you have to do something in a particular way. Because this horn, when you if you were to just blow into it, you don't hear anything. It's just air traveling through a horn. So what you do is you have to buzz your lips. You have to go. Mm-hmm. And it's so much fun because we show all of our participants that's what you have to right. do. And we all practice and doing that. that all together, of course. <laughs> and then we do the horn and it's this giant, just incredible sound to yeah. it. And the best part is you can really feel the vibration. So then we go around and we have everybody put their hand on the didgeridoo and feel that music being created. And it's just a new, different sort of way to visualize music. You know, a lot of these individuals in these facilities or in group homes, they may have entertainers that come in on a regular basis, but a lot of the time that's sitting back and just listening. Mm -hmm. This is actively engaging and learning and really becoming, you know, a group and doing it all together. That's really cool. Really cool. And it's cool that you're using that kind of instrument, all these different kinds. So it's not just a basic, you know, guitar or a flute or something like that. Exactly. We try to do lots of variety. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And so your background is in music then, I assume? So that's what you would assume. But no, actually, my partner is really the one with the strong music background. She's been playing the cello since she was 10, Mm -hmm. understands music theory and really has created our music curriculum that we use as our base for creating sessions. 
I'm much more on the business aspect of it and running a lot of the logistics from right. Boca up northward. I do play a little bit of music. I'm <laughs> not good at it. It's not relaxing to me. <laughs> it's not um, what I love to spend myself doing sure, in my free time, sure. but I love listening to music. I love engaging, you know, in other mm -hmm. people playing music. And that's what I love about our sessions are to engage, you know, to be a team member. You can volunteer with Mind and Melody and you don't have to have a musical background because so much of the time what we're teaching are just such basic concepts that you can sit, you can help explain that to a participant, you can help them play along, right. you know, you can help them engage basically. Sure. And so a music session, is it solely instrument based or is there singing or vocals involved as well? It's all of it. All That's of it. what's so fun. <laughs> so typically we start off, do a little name game where we get to know everybody a little bit, do that musically where maybe you're going to sing your name mm -hmm. as we go through then probably do a couple of sing-alongs just to get everybody warmed up, see that this is, you know, the fun that we're going to have today. Usually we pass out tambourines and maracas, so everybody's playing along and having fun. Then we may go into a little lesson where we're talking about something. So when we were just doing the didgeridoo, we talked about pitch. And we talked about how, you know, in music there are high pitches, there are low pitches. Mm -hmm. And that instrument, for example, creates a very deep low pitch to it. And then another fun little activity that we did right after the didgeridoo was my session leader, Ashley. She's in the Vero Beach area here. She created these adorable little, I don't even know what to call them. This is going to be hard to describe on the radio, <laughs> but it's like, um, it's just a plastic cup mm -hmm. with a piece of yarn hanging in the center of it. Mm -hmm. And when you pull the yarn very quickly, it sounds like a chicken clucking. Oh, <laughs> I think it's like I think we've all made those. In yes, like school exactly. At some yeah, point. <laughs> it's like this little craft project, but it's yeah. so much fun to bring those in, and then we can show them. Okay, so how do you think the pitch would be different? Right. If the cup was a different size, if it was bigger, that would probably be sure. a deeper pitch. If it was smaller, that may be higher pitched. Sure. So you're teaching. I mean, it's it's encompassing everything. Exactly. That's the <laughs> and idea. large groups, small groups. We do both. Mm -hmm. So we really get the best benefits out of the smaller groups because we're able to get to know people on an individual basis. Sure. But there are plenty of giant facilities, you know, that we need to cater to a group of 20 to 30 and we make that work as well. Mm -hmm. And are you mainly working with those that suffer from Alzheimer's or dementia? So the vast majority of facilities that we are in are healthcare facilities that are working with individuals, mostly in memory cares and assisted mm -hmm. livings. We do also work in a couple of independent livings, though, at this point as well. Mm -hmm. So with those individuals, they may not necessarily have a neurological impairment, but they may be suffering from other things like socialization, you sure. know, or just complete isolation not sure. having socialization. So for us, we're able to come in, really provide that kind of grandkid, grandparent interaction a Absolutely. lot of the time and create a bond that otherwise they may not be able to experience at all. Yeah, and as you we were saying, you know, everybody loves music. I mean, we have our favorite types of music, but there's something right. about music and hearing that um, and you know, listening to a music from a time period that they were vibrant and young exactly. that they enjoy hearing or they remember an instrument that you guys might bring in that was really popular, you know, at that time. And it's bringing them back into that kind of time. The cigar box thing, thing yeah. is the perfect way to describe that because you show a cigar box to, you know, a 20 year old these days. <laughs> right. They don't usually know what it is. Sure. But you show somebody in their 70s, 80s, 90s immediately yeah. they know what it is and it takes them back to oh yeah i remember sunday afternoons my dad would sit in the living room and they tell you these stories while exactly. you're doing these yes. yeah so you're so you are you're getting to know them on an individual basis yeah and so are, you're repeating then i assume places that you um start. yes so ideally you know we start a session at a new facility and ideally we would go two times a month to every single week that's when we really see the most benefits mm -hmm. and we're able to build on those benefits that's the most incredible thing probably to see in our sessions is, you know, when we start, there's not trust there. So we're having to build that and kind of get to know these individuals. Sure. But the best part is when somebody that's in their moderate or severe stages actually starts recognizing our team members when they come in time after time because they've been able to build such a strong emotional connection with each other that that's bypassing something. Yeah. And, you know, they just get that sense of happiness and love again in their yeah. hearts. That's great. And so you and going back a little bit, you were saying that it goes from Boca uh, north. So actually, my partner, Christina, handles everything in Miami. So oh, Miami's our biggest area further. right now. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where we have the majority of our programs are in Miami. But then we also have a significant chunk from Boca now up through Vero. So in total, we have about I think when we just estimated it, it's a little over 100 sessions a month. Now Good for going. you. Good for, and I remember when you start when you were here with us last year, it was 
it was semi starting, correct? Yeah, especially in the Treasure Coast area here, we hadn't even started up yet, right. and you now were, we've got about fifteen. A you month were big here. still in Miami, yep, um, and that's where you started, um, and now it's now it's grown. Yeah, so good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's awesome, and I think it's such a good thing that you're doing and working with these people, and as you said, not necessarily those with cognitive um, impairments. So you're working with all types. Now, are you also um, going into a home in yes. someone's home because yeah. you know and home is everywhere so obviously you're talking about facilities and wherever they may live um, but someone's own personal home exactly yeah the whole aging in place population is a very overlooked population as yes. well I think when I was looking at statistics the other day it's something like 66 percent of individuals want to age at home you know the vast majority aren't able to but those who are then that creates an even bigger you know, issue in terms of Mm -hmm. isolation? Are they getting any socialization? Because if you're just trapped in your home all day, who are you seeing besides the caregivers that may come and take care of you? So we have this one client um, in Juneau Beach, and she lives in this gorgeous condo on the beach. That's what she wakes up to every morning. But she's in her severe stages now, is still verbal, but a lot of the time you can't really understand what she's saying. When we started sessions there, she was very reluctant to let us into our into her home. She didn't want to do anything. She mm-hmm. just wanted to be left alone. We just kept saying, you know, we're just going to sing with you a little bit. We're just going to sit here and sing with you. And it was about three to four months in, she stopped trying to get us to leave. She was looking forward <laughs> to us coming. She would see my session leader, Brianne, walk through the door and just light up yeah. and know that something happy was going on today. And then the other day we had probably our most incredible session yet where she was drifting in and out, sleeping a bit throughout the session. But at the end, she started doing ballerina moves from her days back in her 20s and 30s when she was a professional uh, ballerina dancer. And for her to be able to relive those moments again and want to relive them was so so incredible. So you're getting all these success stories and stuff out of it. And I think that that's wonderful. So we are going to take a quick break. When we return, we'll talk about ways to get involved with your program and all the other stuff that you're doing here now in the Treasure Coast. So stay tuned. For laser vision correction, general ophthalmology, glaucoma, and eyelid surgery, trust board-certified, fellowship-trained refractive surgeon Dr. David J. O'Brien at New Vision Eye Center. His practice includes the medical and surgical management of corneal disease and refractive surgery, including eczema laser vision correction. Call New Vision Eye Center for a consultation or second opinion. Your eyesight deserves world-class eye care. Visit newvisioneyecenter.com or call 772-257-8700. Ronald Reagan once said, life is one grand sweet song, so start the music. Hi. I'm Derek Ogden, president of Word of Mouth Computers and Electronics. We specialize in custom audio, video, and entertainment systems for homes and businesses. With our wide range of brands and services, I can guarantee we'll provide a system that fits your needs perfectly. If you're interested in starting the music in your home or office, call me. Sonos is one of my favorite products because it's so simple to use and the sound is so perfect. That's why Word of Mouth Computers and Electronics offers a price match guarantee on any Sonos product. And as an added bonus, we will deliver, install, and demonstrate the product for you in your home or office for free. If you're interested in learning more about how to start the music at your home or office, call me, Derek, at 888-966-7228. Again, that number is 888-966-7228. And ask for me, Derek, and let's start the music. A member of the iTex trading community, your iTex dollars are welcome. Hi, I'm with Dan Cornell from Saving Your Money. Why should people tune in to your show? Well, I think the number one reason is the investment industry is set up to basically not enrich you. And these are true stories, right? Yes. Everything I've talked about, unfortunately, is true. I think there's a lesson in in each one of these mistakes that can be imparted to the investing public so that they can benefit moving forward. Listen each Tuesday from 3 to 3.30 on iHeartRadio. For keeping your house pest and termite free, as well as your landscape healthy and green, call Compass Pest Control. Hi, this is Brian Combs, co-owner of Compass Pest Control. We are locally owned and operated with over 60 years of experience. We provide personalized, reliable service to all our clients. Call Compass at 772-925-1740 or visit our website, compasspest.com. That's compasspest.com. And 
everyone. We're back with Speaking of Caregiving. I'm Ben Ehrman, your host of Senior Resource Association's talk show. I am talking today with Lauren Koff, director, a vice president and co-founder of Mind and Melody. And we're discussing their music sessions and their programs that they offer from Miami all the way now up into the Treasure Coast. And as I said before, if you're just joining us, Lauren was with us last year at this time. And I brought her back because I love the program that you all have. And I think it's a wonderful thing that you're doing um, with a music background myself. And now your program has just taken off and expanded even more. So I brought her back to kind of give us an update on what's going on. And for those of you that didn't catch the show the first time, what they do. Um, And so they're working with folks with neurological impairments, but not all the time, um, at both um, healthcare facilities or even within their own home. And it's music sessions, not music therapy. Right. We don't use the therapy label just because, you know, we are not board certified music therapists. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about, you know, how much it's growing. We were talking about it a little bit over the break, um, is that now you're up here in Vero. And you've worked with even some facilities here in Vero. And hopefully we'll get you into Senior Resource Association. I know you had a meeting with us. Um, And then you're saying you're even down in Miami. So you really kind of run the gamut there from South Florida up into the middle here. Yeah, we've really started. I mean, it's pretty dense in the South Florida area. We'd really like to expand um, westward, I think, next. That's really our goal um, over into maybe Naples and that area. That would be kind of the next big target that we're looking at. But in this area, we've really been able to saturate the market in terms of healthcare facilities. And now it's more branching out as well into the in-home sessions. We've really just had great success with those and being able to connect with these individuals, provide them with something that they aren't having access to otherwise. So it is. It's really great. We've also started um, very early dabbling into some kids programs as Mm -hmm. well as mental health care facilities. So like... We have this one facility in Del Rey that's South County Mental Health, and they work with individuals, um, large range of ages. I think it's 18 up through like 70. So there it's fun because we get to do a big mix of music. You know, some of it's newer music, some of it's older music. And it's been really neat to watch. We've been there, I want to say about six months now. It's been super cool to see how the group size has grown Mm -hmm. after we've been going, you know, the residents or participants there start talking with each other, saying how much fun this is. And it's just, you know, more and more people keep coming each time. So I've had to keep giving my session leader, Diogo, more and more instruments every Mm -hmm. single time. And (laughs) that's what we love. You know, it makes it less individualized when it's a bigger group, but more people are being reached then. So it's always kind of that balance you're trying to find. And we were saying, you know, how important this is. And music is important. Music being a universal language, as everybody likes to say, um, And it's bringing back a memory of these folks that you're maybe working with that are in their elder years. Um, And then those who are needing the socialization or interaction when you're working with these large groups, they're doing it together. Exactly. Um, And then when you go into their homes, you're working with them on a one-on-one basis and they're getting to know you from your company, Mind and Melody. And you're also, again, reminding them of a time and bringing them back and, and helping them. As you were saying in the first half, you know, this woman that you were with started differently and now she's just progressed better yeah exactly although we may not call it therapy we absolutely see therapeutic benefits i mean it's it's beyond clear to us that we are improving the quality of life and when we can go in and see somebody that really was depressed that was just so sullen sitting in the corner and Mm -hmm. suddenly they're this new person again i mean that is therapeutic what else you know do you want so important so important so how about you know those who like music and want to get involved and help people enjoy music. And how would they get involved with you guys? Yeah, so we have paid positions and we have volunteer positions. If you are a professional musician, we encourage you to apply for one of our paid positions. And either singing or with an instrument. Yes, singing, instrument, both is the best. But, you know, we love either one. I love when I can get a wide range of musicians. Mm -hmm. You know, some are flute players, some are sax players, some play the piano. Or the didgeridoo. Or the didgeridoo, (laughs) exactly. Or have a beautiful singing voice Mm -hmm. and they want someone to accompany them with it you know we what's great is we always send in a team when we're working in these individual homes and in the facilities so that way we're able to really collaborate with each other and create such a cool dynamic of different instruments different you know ways to do it 
And as a volunteer, you could either be a musician that just wants to get involved every once in a while when it for, works for you, or somebody that's not a musician but just loves the idea of music as a universal language and mm-hmm. this is a way to reach people. So they'd come and help you out with the class and kind of yes. help the clients and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so they can sit within the group of participants and actually interact with them one on one because, you know, as I keep saying, so much of what we do is the socialization aspect right. of it. So even just sitting there and talking with the person, they may be, you know, in a moderate or severe state where they aren't actually following along to the lesson that's being taught, but maybe they can just sit and talk to the person next to them Mm. about their day or what they're doing that evening. And that can provide such a release that these individuals, I think it's something that, you know, we just totally take for granted as, you know, normal people going around in our days, how easy it is to talk to others, to have relationships. But when that's removed from you, it's such like a core component of human existence that it it really can mess up. We do. And that, you know, that reminds me of like the show we had on last week. I had the Alzheimer's Parkinson's Association on last week, and they now have started, thanks to Impact 100, a virtual dementia RV that they take around within the community. And they show people who are not living with Alzheimer's and dementia how these people are living with them through ways of daily activities. Mm -hmm. So they're putting on this garb. They didn't tell me too much because we didn't tell our listeners too much. We want them to experience it. But you do, you take this kind of stuff for granted, you know, as you were saying, us with the normal abilities right now. Um, And so, yeah, that reminded me of our show last week is is what you just said. So it's important to help these people out and kind of get them engaged and and keep them well, you know. So is it a 501c3 nonprofit? Yes. So we are a nonprofit organization. And what's great about that is we're able to offer our programs, you know, at a reduced cost to mm-hmm. most of our facilities. Yeah. If we have a specific grant that's for a given area or we've gotten a large donation to be able to help with that. So that allows us to really try to reach more people and expand quicker. Um, our goal really is to start bringing this to more states in the next few years and then globally from there. So how long has it officially been going on? So we started sessions back in 2014, but Mm -hmm. that was just our pilot program at the FAU Memory and Wellness Center. We did that for about six to eight months, I want to say. And in there, that was when we really saw the huge benefits, saw how transformative this was, and we're like, this is what we're supposed to be doing. So then from there, we spent a little time getting our 501c3, getting all the paperwork, you know, insurance, everything else on that end. And then from there, really started our sessions, and it's been kind of a slow building process up until um, last year in 2017. It really kind of took off, and we were seeing, okay, this is really going to be something. You know, I think we can keep this going from here. Absolutely. And so people can get involved with you in any type of way, whether it's through donations, um, working with you as a paid position if they're a professional musician, um, or volunteering. And do you have a like office like do you have a location (laughs) yeah so that's the tricky thing really we're very remote Um, most of the work that I do I just do from home so the best way to get in touch with us would Mm -hmm. be through our website and just go to mindandmelody.org all spelled out spelled out (laughs) yep or you could give me a call my phone number is 772-233-6839 and I'd be happy to tell you more about what we do and why we love what we do Mm -hmm. and would love to get you involved sure so it's mindandmelody.com or dot com or dot org. Either oh, one will take you. Look there. at you. You have both of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's all spelled out. Yes. Great. And so that's where they can find out more information, how to get involved as an individual, or if they know somebody who is in need of your sessions. Yes. Whether a place that they work at um, or somebody that they're caring for at home to sign these, to sign them up for these. Exactly. Yeah. Or, you know, if you're interested in volunteering with us in another capacity, like grant writing or recruitment, we're always yes, looking for more important. individuals to do that's that in, too. As a, you know, as another nonprofit to a nonprofit, I understand <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that stuff. You need that stuff. You know, it's how, it's how we're surviving. So definitely get in touch with them and see how you can help in any way. And if you know of somebody who ba- may be in need of this wonderful music sessions that they offer, or if you work for a facility that has a group of people that would enjoy this, get in touch with them as well. So, Lauren, thank you so much for thank being you, back ben. with us. I really appreciate it. If you need any further information, you can reach out to me at info at sramail.org. And I will also get you in touch with Lauren for anything that you might need to know. So, again, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me today. And thank you, New Vision Eye Center of Vero Beach, for sponsoring our show. Next week, speaking of caregiving is all new with a new guest and new topic. So be sure to tune in. Thank you for joining us and we'll talk again next week.